There's no feeling more intense than starting over. If you've broken your scratch project moments after you've shared it, as I have, or you've spent hours working on a project only to notice too late that one of your sprites has unexplainably gone missing. If you've made use of that difficult to name thing of thing block within the sensing category, amazingly useful but capable due to a scratch bug of leaving you crying as it dumps all your scripts in one big and ordered heap if you've made real progress coding a game over the course of the week, only to come back the next day to discover you weren't even logged in. Nothing has been saving. What? Starting over is harder than starting up. If you're not ready for that, like if you've already had a bad day at school, then what you're about to go through may be too much. Feel free to go away and come back. I'll be here. All right. Thanks for coming with me on this trip. I'll understand if you need to take a break at any point. Just find a safe place to stop and remember to pause the game by pressing P. On Scratch you can find loads of remixed or reimagined recreations of existing games. And with good reason. George Bernard Shaw said, Imitation is not just the sincerest form of flattery. It's the sincerest form of learning. This game is a recreation of a game that came out in 2017, titled Getting Over It with Bennett Foddy. That game in turn was a homage to a free game that came out in 2002. Both games involved dragging yourself, using a hammer, up a mountain assembled from assets and objects sourced from many other games. It seems appropriate then that, when trying to recreate Getting Over It in Scratch, that we should construct our mountain from the same assets used in literally millions of Scratch projects the unmistakable contents of the Scratch costume library. Unlike Unity or Unreal, Scratch does not provide you with a built-in physics or 3D rendering engine. It is no state-of-the-art debugger, you can't even pause your scripts. We are forced to program old school. Our experience capped at 30 frames per second on a 480 by 360 pixel stage. But these very restrictions force us to experiment, to think out of the box, 
to grow as developers as we become masters of all things Scratch. And let's not forget, what we lack in technology, we make up for in community. This fantastic bunch of budding software engineers, building, learning, creating, playing, remixing, as diverse a group of people as the very Scratch assets we now so skillfully attempt to ascend.
The act of climbing, in the digital world or in the real world, has certain essential properties that give the game its flavour. No amount of forward progress is guaranteed. When you start getting over it, you're standing next to a dead tree, which blocks the way to the entire rest of the game. You prod and poke at it, exploring the limits of your reach and strength, trying to find a way up. When starting a new Scratch project, that initial blank slate is both refreshing and at times a little scary. Wouldn't it be great if we could travel forward in time and review our finished projects to see how well they turned out? I certainly wish we could. The real draw of coding, what gives it that special zing, is the challenge of accomplishing something you've never done before. Oh man, you lost a lot of progress.
At this point, you don't want to fall into the trap of rushing into creating loads of content, designing all the levels, the player costumes, all the easier stuff that can be perfected later. No, before all that, you need to prod and poke that tree. That is, understanding the coding difficulties you're expecting to face and try out any ideas to solve them. You may not be able to time travel, but at least this way you can get a good idea of how well your project is likely to go and potentially save yourself a lot of time.